good morning dear students today we will discuss about nuclear fusion reaction and nuclear fusion reactions so let us start with nuclear fusion reaction students as we know that the heavier elements they are having less binding energy and they are unstable experimentally Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann they discovered that if the slow moving neutrons are bombarded to a heavy nucleus those nucleus break up into two lighter nuclei of comparable mass along with it to release an enormous amount of energy what it is the first time Otto Hahn's Otto Hahn's Otto Hahn's and Strassmann Strassmann they discovered that when slow moving neutrons are bombarded to a heavy nucleus that the heavy nucleus absorb the neutrons and become the compound nucleus within a short interval of time those nuclei break up into two lighter nuclei of comparable masses along with it release large amount of energy that reaction we are calling nuclear fusion reaction here what is nuclear fusion reaction the reaction the process of reaction in which a heavy nucleus break up into two lighter nuclei of comparable masses along with the release of large amount of energy for example if we take a uranium nucleus this is a uranium nucleus. To this heavy nucleus, if a slow moving neutrons are bombarded, slow moving neutrons mean the neutrons with kinetic energy is less than or equal to one mega electron volt. Shall we take? See here, when slow moving neutrons are bombarded to this nucleus, this nucleus becomes compound nucleus by capturing this neutron. How it becomes? This becomes compound nucleus. Becomes compound nucleus. Capturing this neutron within a small interval of time, this nucleus break up into barium and krypton. How it will break up? This will be break up. This will be break up like barium, barium and krypton, barium and krypton, along with the large amount of energy. Along with the large amount of energy, this barium has the mass number has the mass number one forty one, and atomic number is fifty six. Atomic number is fifty six. And krypton, krypton has the mass number ninety two, mass number ninety two, and atomic number is fifty six. I mean. The process of breaking of heavy nucleus into two lighter nuclei of comparable masses, along with the release of a large amount of energy. Here, question arises: Why the large amount of energy be released? Students, after nuclear fusion reaction takes place, this masses of the reactant is less than. Masses of the product is less than masses of reactant. Due to difference in mass, a mass defect will occur. During this nuclear fusion reaction, the mass defect will occur of the order 0.216 atomic mass unit. I mean, the difference between masses of reactant and product. Due to the difference in masses, mass defect will occur. How much mass defect? 0.216 atomic. Due to this mass, this mass is converted into energy according to Einstein mass energy equation. I mean, this energy, this energy, this energy must be equal to Q value. This Q value must be equal to convert into this equation. I mean, this mass mass can be converted into energy according to Einstein mass energy equation. Then, 
when uranium breaks up into two lighter material, this much mass flattened. Due to this mass, this much energy will occur. And this energy must be equal to this energy must be equal to 200 mega electron. Actually, this energy is nothing but this energy is nothing but kinetic energy of this product nuclei. And remember this point. Whatever the product are obtained during nuclear fusion reaction, those products are radioactive elements. Those are radioactive elements and are harmful. They are harmful. Remember, this nuclear fusion reaction, nuclear fusion reaction can be takes place at a room temperature also. And during the nuclear fusion reaction, here large amount of neutrons are produced. Here actually in this reaction, on and average, two to three neutrons are produced along with large amount of energy. When this nucleus will be break up, our on and average, on and average three neutrons are produced. Two to three neutrons are produced. These neutrons produced in this reaction, they can cause further nuclear reaction. I mean, this is one neutron. This neutron causes this nuclear fusion reaction. During this nuclear fusion reaction, this much number of neutrons are produced. These produce neutrons. They can cause a further nuclear reaction. Again, some other radioactive isotope will produce. So, this reaction will be continued as a chain. This reaction will be continued as a chain due to what? Due to the more number of neutrons are produced for every fusion. Then see here, during nuclear fusion reaction, there is large amount of energy will be added. And here, per fusion, per fusion, more amount of energy will be released. But per nucleon in this reaction, less amount of energy will be produced. Then, what we say that, the producing neutron that will be responsible for further nuclear reaction. Further nuclear reaction. And that reaction can be continuous continuously. And remember, once this nuclear reaction can be takes place, either this reaction can be controlled nuclear reaction or it may be uncontrolled nuclear reaction. Now let us see, now we have to discuss about chain reaction. Nuclear chain reaction. Nuclear chain reaction nuclear chain reaction see here nuclear chain reaction is a self propagating nuclear fusion reaction in which the all atoms of fissionable undergo disintegration what it mean the reaction is said to be chain reaction. If it is self propagating, in which the all atoms of fissionable material undergo disintegration. I mean, in a radioactive isotope, how many atoms are there? All the atoms must be disintegrated. Then that reaction we are calling nuclear chain reaction. See here, for nuclear chain reaction, there is one condition. The condition is the number of neutron produced in the product must be greater than number of neutrons in the reactor. I mean, the final produced neutron must be more than incident neutrons here. Here actually three neutrons are there. Here how much neutron is produced? One neutron is there. That is, if the rate of production of neutrons are more than the incident proton, then only the self-sustained chain reaction can be possible. This chain reaction must be self-propagating or self-sustaining. It can be determined by one more factor that we are calling neutron multiplication factor or reproduction factor. See here, neutron multiplication factor, neutron multiplication factor or reproduction factor. Neutron multiplication factor is the ratio of a rate of a production of neutron to the rate of a loss of neutron. How it is? The rate of, the ratio of rate of, 
rate of production of neutron to the rate of the rate of loss of neutrons of this the ratio of rate of production of neutron to the rate of loss of neutron this we are calling neutron multiplication factor or we are calling reproduction factor from this factor you can say that whether the reaction is a self sustained chain reaction or it may be non self sustained chain reaction see here for a self sustained chain reaction the ratio of rate of production of neutron and rate of production of loss of neutron must be equal to 1 i mean if this ratio must be equal to 1 then the nuclear reaction is self propagating or self sustained nuclear chain reaction If k equal to one, k equal to one means the rate of production of neutron to rate of loss of neutron must be equal to one. Then that nuclear chain reaction is self-sustained or is a self-propagating. I mean, it may be a controlled nuclear chain reaction. In the case, the neutron multiplication factor is greater than one, then that reaction is very critical. In that reaction, we are calling uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction. I mean, if a rate of production of neutrons are more, very very large as compared to incident of neutrons, then that reaction must be uncontrolled. In that case, neutron multiplication factor is less than one. Then, after some time, this nuclear reaction may not be propagated, and this nuclear reaction may be die. I mean, directly, if K is less than one, then that reaction is not a self-propagating reaction. So here, this nuclear chain reaction can be classified into two categories. One is controlled nuclear chain reaction and uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction. In controlled nuclear chain reaction, what happens? In controlled nuclear chain reaction. The rate of production of neutrons are obtained to a certain level, then fissionable neutrons become constant. And in this reaction, so large amount of energy will be released. And this principle we are using in nuclear reactor. What we say? The nuclear chain reaction, we can classify into two categories. Classify into two categories. One is what? One is controlled nuclear chain reaction. Controlled nuclear reaction. Controlled nuclear reaction. Controlled nuclear reaction. And second one is uncontrolled nuclear reaction. Uncontrolled nuclear. Reaction, uncontrolled nuclear reaction. See here, in a controlled nuclear chain reaction, what happens? The rate of production of neutrons are obtained to a certain level, and the fission producing neutrons becomes constant. And in this reaction, we are obtaining the maximum amount of nuclear energy. And this principle we are using nuclear power reaction. Then in the uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction, what happens? In uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction, the neutrons are produced to an indefinite level, and then it is an enormous amount of energy. That is uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction that takes place in atoms. Here, in atoms, what happens? The neutron multiplication factor goes on increase. I mean. Neutrons are allowed to multiply indefinitely in such a way that it will release a large amount of energy. It releases a large amount of energy. That's why the uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction that may be takes place in case of atom bomb. We say that when the heavy nucleus breaks up into tau lighter nuclei by absorbing the slow moving neutrons, and the products are obtained. The products are they can be active and they can be radioactive. These are radioactive elements. They can undergo beta decay or they can undergo gamma decay. 
because after we have to give one give one happens dynamic is possible that's what whatever the products of pain whatever this products of pain these products of pain they may be reactive and they may be very dangerous and see here whatever the product the opting from this uranium 235 is not unique different types of products are opting in case of nuclear fusion reaction now let us see nuclear fusion reaction nuclear fusion reaction that we see nuclear fusion reaction nuclear fusion reaction nuclear fusion students as we know that the very light nuclear whose mass number is less than 8 for those nuclear binding energy is very less and are unstable for stability of this nuclei this nuclei try to combine a single nucleus during combining they release large amount of energy what we say the element whose mass number is generally less than 4 those elements are unstable and those elements are try to combine to form a new During the mining, they release large amount of energy. They release a large amount of energy. Here, what is nuclear fusion reaction? Nuclear fusion reaction is a process of combining two lighter nuclei to form a new nucleus, along with the release of large amount of energy. Along with the release of large amount of energy. In this reaction. Two lighter nuclei will combine due to form heavy nucleus. During heavy nucleus, it releases large amount of energy. For example, now we take two lighter nuclei like deuterium. See here. This is the isotope of deuterium. Deuterium nucleus is there. When two deuterium nucleus combine, it form heavy nucleus. For heavy nucleus helium, along with it release large amount of energy. It release large amount of energy. So what is nuclear fusion reaction? The process of combining two lighter nuclei to produce heavy nucleus, along with the release of large amount of energy. Then let us see how this large amount of energy will release. The large amount of energy will release because of mass effect of the reactant and product. The masses of the reactant is less greater than masses of the product due to this mass effect. That mass effect is converted into energy. Here, when two deuterium nucleus are combined, helium nucleus is produced. So during the difference in mass is there. The difference in mass of the order. Zero point of zero two five six of E. Right? This mass is converted into energy according to Einstein mass and other relation. According to Einstein mass and other relation. Right? The energy release in this process nearly equal to twenty four mega electron volt. Nearly equal to twenty four mega electron volt because of this mass. Remember, students, this nuclear fusion reaction it takes place at a very high temperature. That's what these nuclear fusion reactions. They are also called as a thermonuclear reaction. What are called the nuclear fusion reactions? They are also called as a thermonuclear reaction. 
thermonuclear reaction because the next phase are high temperature. For nuclear fission reaction to be takes place, some conditions are valid. The conditions are the temperature of the nucleons must be very high. I mean, temperature of the nucleons is of the order 10 plus to 6 Kelvin. And the kinetic energy of the nucleons nearly all greater than 0.1 mega electron volt. For these conditions, nuclear fusion reaction should be taking place. Actually, nucleons are repelled because of the protons are there, neutrons are there. The proton proton may repel each other. Due to repulsion, they go combined. If temperature of the nucleons maintain this much, and kinetic energy of those nucleons is of the 0.1 megaelectron volt, those nucleons can combine and they can produce the nucleus. Along with large amount of energy will be produced. But here, this much amount of temperature not possible on the earth. That's why right. the nuclear fusion reaction they can be take place in sun and they can take place in some of the stars. Actually, in the stars, the main components are hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen and helium. The sun components are nitrogen and carbon and surface. Actually, in the sun, the hydrogen nuclear combined it produces helium nucleus and it releases large amount of energy due to the mass effect. Whatever amount of energy released due to combining of hydrogen and helium by the stars and sun, that energy they are calling stellar energy. A stellar energy means the energy radiated by the sun and other stars. Stellar energy. Energy. And remember, whatever energy radiated by the sun and other planets, that will depend on temperature of those planets. Actually, inside the sun, the temperature is of the order 10 to 7 planets. Due to temperature, hydrogen are combined and it produces helium nucleus. During production helium nucleus, it produces large amount of energy. That energy radiated by the sun. That we are calling stellar energy here. See here, the sun produces energy of the order 3.8 into 10 to 26 joule per second. Due to this energy, due to mass effect, the sun radiates the energy of what value? Sun radiates the energy 3.8 into 10 to 28, 26 joule, not 28. 6 joule per second. And this energy must be equal to this energy must be equal to 2 into 10 to 9 kg of hydrogen per year. Per year, per year, Earth radius, sun radius the energy of hydrogen. How much it is? 2 into 10 to 9 kg per year. Per kg year. And to reduce the 5% of mass of the sun, it may radiate the energy for 5 billion years. Actually, per year, how much energy of hydrogen will be released? 2 into 10 minus 9 kg of hydrogen will be consumed per year. And to reduce the 5% of mass of the sun, it must be radius the energy of the order 5 million. Because what is the mass of the sun? The mass of the sun is of the order 2 into 10 to 2. The thickness is available. So per year, 2 into 10 to 2, 9 kg of hydrogen will be combined. To radius, 3.8 into 10 to 2, 26 joule per second. And remember students, once the nuclear fusion reaction can be takes place, it cannot be controlled. It cannot be controlled. And here, in the nuclear fusion reaction, per fusion, per fusion, very less amount of energy will be released. But per nucleon, it can radiate very large amount of energy. See here, we said that in the sun and other stars, the hydrogen combined into 
form the helium nucleus the formation of hydrogen to form the helium nucleus can be takes place by two cycles first cycle is proton proton cycle and second one is carbon nitrogen takes carbon nitrogen cycle i mean the production of energy that is stellar energy can be takes place by combining by combining the proton proton cycle proton proton cycle and second one is carbon nitrogen cycle using this process there appears a large amount of energy so this is what nuclear fusion reaction see here by combining all the facts of nuclear fusion and nuclear fusion reaction we can compare compare out we can make the difference difference between nuclear fusion reaction and nuclear fusion reaction the general point i want to explain nuclear fusion is the process of splitting of a nucleus into two lighter nuclei of comparable masses but nuclear fusion is the process of combining two lighter nuclei to produce heavy nucleus along with large amount of energy nuclear fusion reaction can be expressed at room temperature but nuclear fusion reaction can be expressed at a very high temperature nuclear fusion reaction can control but nuclear fusion reaction cannot be controlled and in nuclear fusion reaction per fusion more amount of energy will be released of the order 200 mega electron volt but in case of fusion per fusion per fusion very less amount of energy will be released that is of the order 24 mega electron volt right i see here yeah? this nuclear fusion reaction we are using principle of atom bomb but nuclear fusion reaction we are using the principle of hydrogen bomb so these are what few difference between nuclear fusion reaction and nuclear fusion reaction here one more concept is remaining already we said that the chain reaction can be classified into two category one is controlled nuclear chain reaction and uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction control nuclear chain reaction in the neutrons produces in new, during nuclear fusion reactions or it has a certain level then if is ideal neutrons produce becomes constant so the control nuclear chain reaction that takes place in nuclear reactor the nuclear reactor that we have to see nuclear reactor nuclear reactor is a device which supply continuous amount of nuclear energy it supply continuous amount of nuclear energy the nuclear reactor it working on the principle of controlled nuclear chain reaction in controlled nuclear chain reaction what happens the neutrons are allowed to multiply to a certain level then after the fusion producing neutrons remains constant and here we obtain sufficient amount of energy see here when fissionable materials fissionable materials mean the materials which undergo nuclear fusion fusion so that we are calling fissionable materials when fissionable materials are incident by sloping neutrons it produce two lighter nuclei of comparable masses so the nuclear fusion control nuclear fusion reaction takes place in nuclear reactor see here these are the structure of nuclear power reactor the essential component of nuclear reactor what to be takes place for nuclear control chain reaction the essential components of nuclear reactor are the fuel this we are calling the fuel and the core this we are calling the core moderators control rods this we are calling control rods the coolant this we are calling coolant the reflector and finally seal wall so let us explain one by one part of nuclear power reactor first of all the fuel see here fuel is the source of nuclear fusion reaction 
is a source of nuclear fission reaction this material contains a isotope of helium nucleus isotope of uranium or isotope of fissile materials like the, we are taking uranium we can take we can take the thorium or we can take plutonium generally the source for nuclear fusion reactions we are using in the nuclear power reactor are we are taking uranium uranium 235 or we are taking thorium 232 or we are taking plutonium 239 or we are taking plutonium 238 so all these are what the source for nuclear fusion reaction then the core the core this we are calling the core the core is the site where a nuclear fusion reaction takes place directly the center of the nuclear power reactor that we are calling core at this, at this point the fuel undergo nuclear fusion it produces light nuclei along with large amount of energy right then moderators see here when nuclear fissile undergo nuclear fusion reaction it produces neutrons though the neutrons may be fast moving neutrons fast moving neutrons mean the neutrons whose kinetic energy is greater than 1 mega per moment right these fast moving neutrons they may undergo beta decay and gamma decay they may be undergo beta decay and gamma decay so the fast moving neutrons they are slowed down by moderators fast moving neutrons are slowed down by moderators generally the moderators we are using in nuclear reactors are graphite barium oxide and certain organic compounds so generally what are the moderators we can take it we are taking the moderators in the nuclear reactor are graphite graphite barium oxide and certain organic compounds. These materials slow down the fast moving protons. Because fast moving protons are unstable, they can undergo beta decay and gamma decay. Then finally, control rods. Control rods. Control rods, these are neutron capturing rods. By capturing the neutrons, they maintain the nuclear fusion reaction to a optimum rate and we can obtain control nuclear chain reaction see here what are the control rods control rods are neutron capturing rods by capturing the neutrons it can maintain the nuclear fusion reaction to a certain optimum level generally the control rods we are making boron rods or we are making Cadmium rods. The cadmium rods and boron steel rods. We are using as a control rods in nuclear power reactor. See here. Then after cooling. Actually, during nuclear fusion reaction, large amount of heat energy will be avoided. This large amount of heat energy can be removed by the high pressure of water and carbon dioxide. But within the high pressure of water or carbon dioxide in the nuclear reactor, we can remove the large amount of heat and the large amount of heat can be exchanged through heat exchanger. Through air heat exchanger. Then after the one more part of nuclear reactor, the reflector. The reflector work is this reflector prevent the escape of the neutrons from the core. Actually, this we are calling the reflector. The reflector work is it prevent to escape the amount of neutrons from the core. Then finally, shield wall. Finally, shield wall. See here, during nuclear fusion reaction, there may be possibility of the gamma rays and beta decay. The gamma rays are very dangerous, they are high penetrating power. To prevent the gamma rays and beta decay, that is beta rays, we are constructing a thick wall of concrete about a 6 to 8 feet. The 6 to 8 feet of concrete wall that is surrounded by the bore that we are calling seal wall. This seal 
बार पर में the dangerous radiation coming out from the core of the nuclear reactor. So these are one few parts of nuclear reactor. Then what are the uses of nuclear reactor? Generally, the nuclear power reactor it can supply the maximum amount of nuclear energy. The nuclear power reactor they are used to produce electric power. They used to produce electric power. Fine. The nuclear reactor when used to run nuclear submarine. When used to run nuclear submarine inside the sea. Fine. Nuclear reactors are also used to produce radioactive isotopes because during nuclear fusion reaction products are acquired. Those products are very dangerous and they are radioactive objects. That's why the nuclear reactors are used to produce radioactive isotopes. So this is what. So construction and some parts of nuclear. 